ever. Success as a guide is measured by incredible fishing. That is the ultimate in partnership and How you teamwork. Like that, brother? How you yeah. like that? The ability to adapt. Yeah, that's good. Stunning locations. This place is awesome. And satisfied clients. Place, dude. First place. <laughs> I'm Mark Melman, and this is Guided. So coming up is a very special edition of Guided, and the reason why it's so special is because we get to work with an organization called Project Healing Waters. We also get access to the Salmon River. Now the Salmon River is one special body of water, and there's one reason why. It's all because of the hatchery. Years ago, one of the Great Lakes wasn't so great. Due to a variety of factors, Lake Ontario saw the extinction of apex predators such as lake trout and Atlantic salmon. And to make things worse, there was an invasive species alewife boom wreaking havoc on the balance of the lake. In 1968, a program was developed to reintroduce predators back into Lake Ontario. And over time, there was some success. At that time, there were 11 hatcheries in New York State, and all of the fish that we were going to stock Pacific salmon and later steelhead, et cetera, uh, were being raised in those hatcheries until this hatchery was built in 1980. In 1980, New York State's largest hatchery was built expressly to raise steelhead, Pacific salmon, coho salmon, and brown trout to assist in the alewife fight. It is this, the New York State Salmon River Fish Hatchery, which is a major contributor to the very intensive, very spectacular sport fishery for big numbers of large fish. It is exclusively for raising trout and salmon for both Lake Ontario and the section of Lake Erie that New York State borders. The rebuilding of an environmental collapse, which is now a major contributor to Oswego County's recreation and tourism industry. The real bottom line is that good biology, in this case, what we do here at the hatchery, raising these fish for stocking, the environmental things that we've done to improve our, our water quality, both in the lake and in the streams. The biology comes first, the economics come out of it. So we've created a, a good biological system that's producing fish that can survive in this system today. It's not the same system it was 150 years ago. But it is what we have today, and these fish are, are thriving in these watersheds, so they attract people to come and fish for them. The fishing is great in New York State. Those of you who are new arrivals, come and see me before you hit the water. So what does this all have to do with guiding? Well, the guiding industry in Oswego County, New York, is strong all year long. Let your guide know your needs. I have tons oh, of rod. Whether you fish from shore, through the ice, the banks of a river, or in the middle of the lake, guiding is a vital industry to the area. Yeah, I, do. I don't screw around. And that's a major reason why we're here, to work. Local guides from all over the state converge on the Salmon River once a year to volunteer their time to Project Healing Waters fly fishing. So why do you volunteer your time? because I can't serve, so it's a way to, for me to give back. Stevie, you know, put his life on the, on the line for me and for my country, and this, this is the least I can do is take him fishing and teach him something I know how to do. A group dedicated to the physical and emotional rehabilitation of disabled active military service personnel and veterans through fly fishing and fly tying. Many come together each year to wade the waters and hook some giants. Project Healing Waters has existed since 2006 when it was formed at Walter Reed Medical Center uh, in Maryland. Uh, and since then, it's grown to be over 139 programs in 46 states, Canada, Australia, and the UK. There's a need for Project Healing Waters, not only with soldiers currently returning from recent conflicts, but also for past generations. Fly fishing offers a great recreational therapy for a lot of these men and women. There is no commitment needed, though we do enjoy people regularly attending our programs. Reasons for coming would be meeting new people, learning some new skills, and being able to get outside and enjoy the outdoors. It's at no cost to veterans or participants, and it's just a great place for good camaraderie and a great way to spend an afternoon. Detected 
These veterans have seen combat, and some receiving catastrophic injuries have rehabilitated and returned to the battlefield. Project Healing Waters is here for the veterans return home, assisting through fly fishing the rebuilding process and rehabilitation of both physical and mental injuries. Directly behind the hatchery, there's a mile and a half stretch of fish sanctuary closed to everyone 363 days a year. For two days only, the New York DEC allows Project Healing Waters Syracuse exclusive access. Before I meet my client and start guiding, I get to rub shoulders with a legend of fly fishing. This is Bill Spicer. Bill Spicer is a past guide and a current Triple F fly casting instructor in Ontario, Canada. Bill, I've been watching you for years, man. It's my pleasure to Thank finally you. get Thank to you. fish with you. Can I impose on you that you take a look at my technique and maybe give me a couple of pointers? Absolutely. And usually, with just with some basics, your your casting should improve within five minutes. So let's Go have on. a look and see what okay. you what, what you got here. Great. So I'm fishing with a uh, Kaufman Stonefly. Yeah. Don't have any weight because it's a beaded head. Okay. Okay, Mark, get some line out there and let's see what you can do. Oh boy. We're here in Pulaski, New York, in the state's largest fish hatchery for an opportunity unlike any other. We're guiding for Project Healing Waters fly fishing, helping wounded veterans rehabilitate body and mind through fly tying and fly fishing. Before we get started, I hook up with Triple F fly casting instructor Bill Spicer for a little touch up. What can go wrong? What? Come on, what? And like I said, oh boy. So, Bill, you didn't like what you saw? <laughs> well, it's not that I didn't like you, you. You could cast well enough to fish. Right. Now, to improve your casting for those longer casts, I'm going to give you some, some basics here to help you out. Okay. There's three different basics. The tip of the rod must go in as straight a line as you can make it. Okay. That gives you good loop. And when you have good loops, you're going to get distance. You want your hand to go forward in a straight line and back in a straight line, just like that. Right. The second thing you must do, OK, is stop the rod. It's a bow and arrow effect. I want you to see this. Stop, 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 it does shoot stop, line. stop, stop. Okay. And the third thing you must do is have good timing. That's got nothing to do with music or anything like that. It's allowing enough time for the line to stretch out on each stroke. Yeah. So let, let's, let's uh, concentrate. I think the first thing you should try to do is a straight line with the rod tip. If you make it go in a straight line, see how your, your loops tighten right up by doing that? Yeah. And you're stopping good. You've understanding now to stop. Oh, that's a little too long because it's starting to drop. Yeah, so you, you, if it's starting to drop, then it's come back a little sooner. My bad. Rookie mistake on my my part. Oh, uh, look, we have, we have a hackle and a stonefly making sweet love. <laughs> Oh, Mark, 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 come on. <laughs> wow. That's how easy that can happen. That's slippery, man. Yeah. You know, oh, hold it. You have a Jeremy. I caught myself a cameraman. We have a Jeremy fish. So one of the interesting things, though, Bill, is that your timing will... Your timing no, will... No, I don't believe that. Do you mind if I catch this fish? I'm, I'm, go ahead. <laughs> I'm with you on that one, buddy. This is how good an instructor Bill Spicer is. <laughs> Just lead, lead him to me. Lead him to me. Well, Mark, that's a male fish. You can tell by how dark it is. And the adipose fin is there, so this yeah, is actually this, a wild fish. It's a fish. wild fish, so there is reproduction here. Now, I'm going to go upstream and, and try to catch a fish. OK. You've already done it. <laughs> Let's, Let's go catch some. Let's go catch some. <laughs> Beautiful. Hey, Bill, I might need your help with this. OK. Yeah. Yes, sir. Now, that is what you come to Oswego County to the Salmon River for. Beautiful, world-class steelhead. Unbelievable. So Bill heads off to find his Project Healing Waters veteran, and my school by steelhead continues with local guide and owner of Vermont's The Fly Rod Shop, Bob Shannon. So Bob, you're not from around these here parts, are you? You're, uh, you're, you come in from a long way to fish the Salmon River. How do you know it so well? Well, I grew up about 35 minutes from here in Clinton, okay. New York. And um, I started fishing here in my um, late teens. 
Guided here in my 20s and then moved to Vermont. I come back every year for the fall and spring runs. I'm very familiar with the area. I've got about 26 years on the Salmon River. Wow, so you've got all kinds of different techniques that you can apply to any given situation. Let's, uh, let's figure some out. Okay, we have a rig that's set up for surface bite. Cast our fly across the river. Uh -huh. This system here, these fish are not coming up to feed on dry flies. Okay. All right? That's important to know, right? Absolutely, because what we're trying to do is just trigger their mechanism of instinct. Right, yeah. They're not here to feed on the top, so what we do is we create as much movement on the fly as we can so that the fly skates or skitters across the water column. Right. And what you want to do is focus your attention on the seams where the fast and slow water meet. Yeah. So when you, you when you position yourself, you want to position it into the place you want to swing the fly. Okay, so I'm standing in the right spot. You're in the good spot. Now you don't want any belly in the line. You want the line tight to the contact point where the fly is. We're trying to tease them to come to the surface. Right, as you said, they're the natural predatory instinct. Exactly. Nice. Okay, you've got the drift down right. So now that we've got the technique part of it done, yeah. Let's stock fishing, okay? Yeah. All right. Well, we were fishing. All right. Well, we're going to be in a second. Okay. So your job, our job, when we work with people, yeah. is to really talk them through the process to get them into that rhythm. When you get the guy set up, get, get within their comfort zone of casting. Yeah. Once he's in his comfort zone, move down a foot. Okay. Make three or four drifts to each spot. Okay, and then move down a bit. Your first cast is okay. usually the one that counts. To so be ready to rock. Just be ready on the first drift. Okay. All right, so here's our second setup. <clears throat> I've got a really nice float system I like to use. This system here, which is a Raven float, mm -hmm. it has a post on the top of it. And the benefit to this post is that it's going to show you all of the subtle flaws that are in your in mending technique. So the object is to keep it vertical. Keep it vertical. Now, we're not bottom bouncing, which is a term that people often use in steelheading as far yeah. as covering the bottom column of water. Yeah. What we're doing is we're running a series of small weights. We start with a little bit larger size and then taper it down. Gotcha. So that the egg is floating in that low column. Right, like a natural egg would. Exactly. Gotcha. So here it is in real time. Okay. Cast up and across. Yeah. Stack your mend upstream of the float. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> that was a hit. That might have been a strike right there. <laughs> Let's go out a little bit in the faster water right on that seam. Yeah. So the whole setup on that first mend, that anchor mend, yeah. is to get the line above the float, above the indicator. And then as that thing travels down, it keeps the line from pulling the indicator and pulling the fly out of the strike zone. You see how you've got that line laying in the water? Yeah. OK, that creates a lot of friction. It's in right in your forehead. There you go. Fish on. Oh, yeah. Right Sorry, Jeremy. Between the eyes. Two new techniques to perfect. The arsenal grows deeper. Meanwhile, downriver, Bill starts guiding his Project Healing Waters participant and veteran of both Iraq and Afghanistan, Rob Burke. And Bob takes me to see my client for the day, Iris Strauss. Oswego County, New York State is home to the Salmon River, one of the greatest big fish fisheries in North America. Project Healing Waters Fly Fishing is in town, taking wounded veterans out of their element and into the water, all in the name of physical and mental rehab. And believe me, some of these vets have been through some very trying times. I went into the military knowing that I would serve either in Iraq or Afghanistan uh, as an infantry officer. and. I made those decisions fully knowing that there could be a chance uh, for close combat. Personally, I have uh, struggled with post-traumatic stress. And where were you hit? Um, I was struck in my leg, my torso, my left shoulder, and I have a graze around across my face. After my injuries, I was told that 80% of what I was able to do would, would be a normal for me. Of course, I have limitations with my shoulder and my leg and nerve damage, but I'm able to do a lot now. Project Healing Waters was something that I found while I was at Walter Reed Army Medical Center. It intrigued me. At the time, I thought my disabilities would limit my capabilities. My injuries may make me disabled, but they're not going to be a disability. And I picked up a rod and haven't put it down since. Hey, Ira. Hey, how are you? Nice to meet you. Pleasure. First of all, 
let me say thank you on behalf of not only Americans, but all of North America for the service that you provided. Uh, without people like yourselves, who knows where we'd be. I appreciate that. All right, you want to go catch some fish? Yeah, I'm all about it. Okay, man. So. All right, guys, good luck. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so Ira, this is a new technique for you, as I understand, correct? Absolutely. Okay, so what you're going to want to do is quarter down with a high rod, let it swing, let the swing come around until it hydroplanes. See that one there? Oh, yeah. There you go. That was amazing. I couldn't believe it. Oh, he knows he's hooked. You can palm that a bit and give him a little, little, put the screws to him a bit. Funny how they go to the wood, right? They know, they're smart. He's got you on the rock. It's off. He came off? That was a nice hookup. So the trick is to have it quartered down, keep your rod tip high, let that skim across the surface, and he came up and nailed it. It's hard to believe that a technique like this actually works, huh? Yeah, I wouldn't believe it if I didn't see that hookup. You know, there. and that's one of the great things that people need to keep in mind when they're fishing in a new body of water or a new area, is that invest a little bit of money and hire a guide. I mean, they know what these fish can do. They know different techniques through nothing more than, you know, hours in the river. Rob has been fly fishing for only a little while and considers himself a novice. Though he's hooked many fish, he has never landed a steelhead. Now, if you see anything that moves that indicator, you set the hook. OK. A little harder mend. There you go. Now, healing waters itself, in your own experience, how did wading and casting help you? When I had a leg injury, just getting out in the water into a a platform that wasn't always stable. It allowed my, my body to react uh, in ways that I couldn't just do in a, in a physical therapy room. Not to mention this is fun. <laughs> when there's a purpose to it, yes. it makes it more fun instead of having walking your hand up a wall. That's right. You know, I'm actually doing something that's productive. How long did you serve for? Uh, I served for 22 years. And where? I spent a lot of time in Europe and then uh, after 9-11, uh, split the time between Iraq and Afghanistan. In three tours of Iraq and Afghanistan, Ira had been through some life-changing events. And though the physical disabilities are comparatively minor, he does bear scars. My family is very important to me. I have a fantastic wife and uh, two great boys. And uh, when I came back, I, I would, I could find no pleasure in anything. It was. Uh, in Ira's words, he was a career soldier, alpha male paratrooper, who thought that he could handle anything thrown at him. He was wrong. I, I just was empty, I guess is the best way to say it. They were a big part of my life, and I know I had it good, and I just couldn't find any joy in it. And uh, I started fishing again. I, I started getting excited again, you know, and it brought back uh, something to look forward to, and it was, uh, you know, you were so busy concentrated on uh, getting your hooks into something that you didn't worry about the past. And, uh, you know, there, there's potential. Every caster's potential for, you know, something fantastic to happen. And through the dedication and love of his wife and his children, accompanied by the compassion and camaraderie of Project Healing Waters, Ira is well down his road of recovery. You know, I came as a, a participant and they did so much for me, and I feel this gratitude, you know, now that now I volunteer with the program in addition to being a participant, and I try to, you know, try to do the same that was done for me. And yeah, just, of course, because you're appreciative. Some of the stuff uh, individuals struggle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're on steroids. Taking their steelhead for a walk. Fish, fish. Pink did it. Good job, man. You got them pinned. Multiple hookup on the Salmon River. One upstream and one right here. I love it. There we go. Good net job. Wild fish too, huh? Yes. Good. Now tilt them to me. Smile. Got it. Oh, you got a fish, got a fish on? Right or you hooked up in the bottom? You were hooked up in the bottom. I was. You got a fish. As Rob and Bill seem to be getting bites, Tighten up the line? Yep. Nothing is sticking, but it's not for lack of trying. Oh! Oh! <laughs> no, 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 no. Set, set. 
<laughs> you see that? I saw it. I don't think I... he tasted it. Let's give him a second. Oh, no, no. Meanwhile, upstream, yeah, Ira is putting on a clinic in a very productive that. stretch of water. If we can land this one, you'll see it's a lot darker than yeah. that, that silver. Ooh. Back a little more. Get him, get him! <laughs> All right, Ira, listen, I want to thank you once again for your service to your country and North America and around the world for keeping us safe. Um, it's programs like Healing Waters Project Healing Waters that allow gentlemen like yourself that have been through a lot to come back and integrate themselves back into society and find something that you love and really, really get better. So thanks I again. It. Congratulations. Enjoyed fishing with you. Yeah, man. And this is a wonderful, wonderful animal. Needless to say, Ira and I, as well as Rob and Bill, fish the day away. Ira continued to light it up on the Salmon River, and if you're wondering, Rob's steelhead curse is still with him. We got a group photo to remember a weekend of fine fishing with friends and went our separate ways, stronger for the experience. Project Healing Waters Fly Fishing, well done. Thank you, sir. Thank you. See the bubbles? Yeah. They were sitting in that bubbly water. Okay. I can't tell you how hard it is not to grab a rod and start fishing.